to you how he does it. You go in there, you go to your local butcher, um, you pick the best cuts of meat. And I like that you said most of us should be eating more of the animal. It's actually Definitely. better uh, for the environment, better for your wallet if you do. Definitely. The uh, off cuts are oftentimes more cheaper, but everyone's yeah. always interested in primal cuts. You know, your strips and your ribeyes. It's nice to get off cuts. And then yeah. the other cool thing, too, is that you will be saving money at the end of the day. Yes. And you'll get to explore a bit more. You'll get different flavor profiles, different textures, and that's kind of what we're going to get with beef cheek, which we're going to use for our, our first recipe today. Yes, so don't freak out. It's braised beef cheek with steam <laughs> buns. So beef cheek is something that I grew up with, and yeah. I'm in love with it. And as a chef, we know how to take these cuts and cook them down. Oftentimes, with these tougher cuts, you need to go low and slow, yeah. which is a technique called braising. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to do with beef cheek. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these, and I'm going to place them into the pan. Some people like to flour them first and salt and pepper them. I'm just going to put them into the pan because I'm using soy to use the seasoning for my, okay. for, uh, for my salt. And why are beef cheeks so tough? Can you tell me? I get, maybe it's just where it lands in the animal. Like, you think so? I don't know. It's Isn't it's that usually what, what, like, different cuts of meat depends on where it is in the animal? Sometimes. The, tenderness? The, the tenderloin is a good example of that because yeah. it sits right in the middle. But they're always chewing. So right. there's not a lot of fat, right? So it's very, very oh, tough. I That's see. why they're, oh, when you look at a cow, they're always chewing, right? right? Or when you look at me, I'm always chewing, right? I'm always eating. Always. So. You chefs. Us chefs. So always what we want to do is. on something. Yeah, so what we want to do is we want to get a sear on this. And okay. I have a lot of different seasonings. Into this pot, I'm going to use Korean red chili flake. Yeah. I'm also going to be using some brown sugar, mm -hmm. some ginger and garlic, some uh, cumin that we have here. We have brown sugar as well. And there's some other couple of spices that we're going to have. but. A lot of Asian things going on here, cinnamon and stuff like that. Yeah, kimchi so, I notice. I can't get around kimchi, like I put it on everything. That's it goes good. everywhere on anything. Sometimes yeah. I just have a bowl just like that. So we have a little bit of color coming here. What I'm gonna do is add in just some, uh, some mirepoix. Now you can just add in carrot and onion at home. It doesn't matter how it chops, because really I'm gonna take this out after, after it's done braising. Yeah. What I wanna do is cook this down for a few hours. This is gonna take three to four hours simmering on your stove. All right. It's also nice to get something into the pot such that the meat's not touching the bottom of the pan. Okay. So you're almost trying to create a bed when you're braising, right? Yeah. So I'll dump this into here and now we can start adding our seasonings into the pan because we do want to toast them off before we add our liquid. What happens if the if the meat is just touching the bottom of the pan? It's just it's something you want to avoid because it's not going to braise properly. The water will not be able to circulate it and cook it properly and evenly. Okay. It'll be too direct heat on the bottom. Got it. So Korean red, this is where like the aromats are going to go crazy. Is it super hot? A spicy? Yeah. Is yeah. It hot, it, and spicy. Yeah. This is the, this is one of the prime primal one of the prime ingredients in making kimchi. Mm. It's called gochujiara, so it's Korean red chili flake. Okay. And you know, at the restaurant, we're always doing world inspired stuff, so we have a lot of this stuff kicking around. I have some cumin as well that's going to go in there. Nice. And then we're going to add in some cinnamon. So again, we're keeping it very Asian, very delicious. And you can already see it's already massive flavor going in here. Mm, I can already smell garlic it. Garlic confit. We just boil garlic in a little bit of oil mm. until it just starts to, to boil. Yeah. And then it just mushes right away. And you put it in whole. Well, it's just going to melt. It's yeah. going to disappear. Brown sugar for some sweetness because also I like to finish this with rice wine vinegar a little bit later in the cooking process. Yeah. And then we can add in some soy sauce. I have some sesame oil we can add in for a bit more flavor. This looks like I'm just dumping a bunch of stuff into the pot. But if you go to the website and follow the recipe, it's the same thing, okay? Yeah, no, right, he's on. actually doing something here. <laughs> Cityline.tv yeah. for the recipe for That's all of it. our recipes. Then but we add in some soy. This is all flavor. Yes. And is it because of the cut of meat you chose? Is it because you're braising? Or is it just because you're a flavorful kind of guy? It's the latter. It's a flavorful kind of guy. You can take this, do salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of cumin. Yeah. Or you can like take it above and beyond and really blow people that's away. That's right. OK? Uh, the, the other thing that's going with this, too, is our steam buns, which yes. I have a steamer. You can get these in Chinatown. They're very inexpensive. Yeah. Alternatively, you can just use a steamer. And you can see how the buns get nice and soft. Yeah. These you can buy frozen, you can make them. There's all different ways that you can that you can get a hold of steam buns. But uh, if you want to attempt making them, they're not very difficult to make. They're not, huh? No, but if, if it's intimidating to you and you're like, oh man, I got to make steam buns and now I'm using beef cheek, I've never cooked it before, you can pick these up. Okay. And I don't often recommend people to pick things up, you know that? You never do. I know, but it's like... He says don't even buy your ketchup. You know... <laughs> make it! You know what I'm finding? Make your mustard. You know what I'm finding now with the restaurant is that what? like sometimes you need to cut corners. And like mm -hmm. I would never say this, but sometimes you need to cut a little bit of corners. Yes. And then look how much effort we're putting into the beef chicken, how much flavor is here. 
Totally. It's okay to skip that step. I think I'm growing up a bit. I don't know why you I'm talking what? like this. You know what? Wait till you have like five little devs running around your house. <laughs> oh, man, You'll be like, I'm cutting corners. Let me go yeah. buy some ketchup. Yes. No. But I understand in chef world, whatever you can do to add more flavor and sort of put like, your own ingredients in, you're going to want to do. I was always I get such it. like a scratch made kind of guy. But now wherever I can, I don't know. I think, I don't know. I'm, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'm human. Yeah, you're know. human. So it's all right. what I want to show you is after this cooks, we're going to cut that. Like this, three hours. Yeah. So we're going to cover it with water. Yeah. And you just want this to barely cover the meat, and we'll cover it, and we'll let it simmer. And this is going to braise. It's got nice and quiet, but we want low yeah. and slow. If it's an aggressive boil, it's going to be too intense, and the meat's going to seize up. Right. So we want it to go nice, low, and slow. And then what you end up with, I'll just use my other ones here, is you end up with a piece of meat like this. So it cooks down. Looks good. Okay, it looks really, really good. The sauce, I've strained and I've reduced and I put the meat back into it, okay? Okay. And then what we want to do is, before my hands get dirty, I just want to slice a bun because I want to show you how I would assemble this, okay? Yeah. So we take our bun, you can leave it on the parchment. It needs to be on the parchment when it's on here or else it will stick. Oh, okay. okay. So what I want to do is, I'll leave it on there for now, and I'm going to slice down. And then it's gonna get a little bit messy, but if you're entertaining at home, you would do this all ahead of time. You'd have all your meat pulled into a nice container and uh, you wouldn't get messy. But I just wanna use my hands and show you exactly how soft this gets, okay? okay? So this very tough cut of meat ends up just falling apart. You can pull it apart oh, yeah. and you can see how tender it becomes. This is after about three and a half hours. And if I squeeze it, the meat just melts right apart. Amazing. It's a beautiful thing, and it smells of cinnamon and cumin and yeah. the garlic and the ginger. All these flavors are infused into it. So what I would do is just lay this down yep. on top of my steam bun. You can pull it as much as you want, or you know you don't have to pull it at all. You can just leave it kind of whole because it will melt in your mouth. And then from here, I have kimchi and I have pickled onions. You have all kinds of different toppings that you can add on top of it. Nice. So I would add anything that you want. If you have some things at home, you can experiment, you mango slaw, all kinds of different things you can put on here. So I like, I mean, I like the idea that you're using all of these fermented foods too. I mean, that adds to your nutritional profile as well as the flavor. I know you're more about the for, flavor, but it's actually good for you. Fermenting food's a whole other segment, it but is. it adds such a depth of flavor to food that we try yeah. to use it as much as we can. Like, it's incredible. Um, this is the final product right this here. This is what it looks like here. Beautifully assembled. Yeah. You will impress all of your guests, and it tastes good too. Cityline.tv for the recipe. Give it up for Deb. <laughs>